Hey everybody, time now for Let's Talk College Football. Nothing but college football. Yes, it is the opening weekend of December. Yeah, we made it to December. Of course, that means two things. One, conference championships. Of course, in just a little bit less than an hour, as I'm taping this show on a Friday night, Washington plays Colorado at Santa Clara, California, home of the 49ers for the Pac-12 championship. Washington, they are in with the win. And if Colorado pulls up the upset, you can't rule them out for the playoff, but they'll still need other things to happen. We'll discuss that later. On Saturday, the de facto Big 12 championship, which in terms of the playoff means nothing. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, right now they're playing for a bragging rights in Oklahoma. Of course, the Big 12 championship and a berth to the Sugar Bowl. Still a nice bowl, but it won't be for the playoff. And then the other three conference championships of the major conference variety will have a bearing on the playoff, okay? Starting with the ACC Saturday night, where Clemson needs a win against Virginia Tech to secure a spot. Right now, the Tigers are number three in the latest college football playoff poll. Clemson wins. They get in. If they lose, I think they are on the outside looking in. Remember, Clemson already lost to Pittsburgh earlier in the year. That was a big upset. And I think Bob Tech would be a notable upset as well if Clemson cannot finish the job in the ACC title game. So Clemson knows that it's kind of like a quarterfinal game. You win, you move to the semifinals, but you lose. Devil Sweeney's squad will not get back to the playoff. Then you look at the Big Ten Championship. Should be a pretty good game. Wisconsin against Penn State. Who would have predicted the Nittany Lions will be playing in the Big Ten Championship with heavyweights like Michigan and Ohio State in that division, but Penn State conquered all, and they and Wisconsin both remain somewhat alive as far as the playoff, but still some work will have to be done, uh, some of that beyond their own control. Bama, SEC Championship finally against Florida. Bama is in the playoff no matter what. They're undefeated 12-0, even if they lost to Florida, which won't happen. But by any, but by some flukish nature, if it did, Bama has done way too much work during this season. 12 games, 12 wins, most of them in dominant fashion. There's no way Bama is left out of the college football playoff with a loss. And I think Bama will roll um, on, um, I think they will roll on Saturday. So I think Bama is in. So Bama and Ohio State. Those, I think, are two, in my opinion, guarantees. Some people don't think Ohio State is in because they didn't win the Big Ten. I think their overall body of work is what the committee will look at. So, if you take my words, Bama and Ohio State in. That leaves two other spots. Clemson with the win, they get in. Washington with the win, they get in as well. That will be your final four. Bama, Ohio State, Clemson, as well as um, Washington. The only variance might be that Clemson moves to number two and Ohio State drops to three, but it won't matter uh, because I think it'll be Clemson and Ohio State who will play in the semi. So the seating part really is meaningless. Um, now what happens, though? If one or the other happens, let's say that Clemson wins and Washington loses, or Washington wins and Clemson loses, then I think that next spot will go to the Big Ten champion Saturday night, either Wisconsin or Penn State. All right, I think that's what will happen. The Big Ten's been the best conference all year long. They've had the heavyweights, you know, Michigan, Wisconsin, Penn State, and, of course, the mighty Buckeyes. So I think they will get two if Clemson or Washington loses. Now, if both lose, okay, if Washington and Clemson both lose, the Big Ten's guaranteed to get two teams in. And that fourth team, well, could be Michigan. You could have three teams because, remember, Michigan beat Colorado earlier this year, even though Colorado would have a Pac-12 championship with a win over a top-five team in Washington. Now you can kind of see why the Big 12 is going to be left out of this thing, okay? Colorado's 8, Oklahoma's 9, Oklahoma State's 10. If Colorado pulls off the upset, there's no way Oklahoma or Oklahoma State will pass Colorado because the Buffaloes would have 11 wins, 13 games on the schedule, as opposed to 12 for the Cowboys and Sooners, plus a win over a top-five team, which neither the Sooners or Cowboys can say that. So if you have Washington and Clemson lose, then I think it will be the Big Ten champ for sure. And that fourth spot, it depends on what the committee looks at. If they look at 13 games in the conference championship, the Buffaloes will make it. But if they look at the head-to-head -head mark, and if they look at Michigan losing two close games uh, this year, one to Iowa, and then the other one, of course, to Ohio State in double overtime, the Jim Harbaugh spot is secured by making it to the playoff as an at-large. But who the heck knows how that fourth spot is going to go if uh, both Washington and Clemson lose, if both lose. So a lot to watch for this weekend. Now, let's go ahead and review last week's picks real quickly. Yeah, 
I went down in flames, just like Jesse James. One win. That's all I had. Penn State covering easily against Michigan State. And a tie. Vegas got this on the money. Bama was favored by 18 to beat Auburn. Bama had a strong second half and won the game by 18 points. Man, got to give Vegas credit. My other three games were losses. I thought Iowa State would be competitive against West Virginia. <laughs> I was wrong. West Virginia, too much for the Cyclones. Colorado, I had the Buffaloes winning, but they did not cover the spread. Utah got a late touchdown, so I got screwed in that one. And Ohio State won in double overtime. Problem was, Ohio State was favored by five. Double overtime, they won by three, so I lost that one. So one, three, and one last week. 27-32-1 on the season. Five games below 500. The best I could do is basically have an even Steven record, but I got to win all five of these selections. Let's pick the first game real quick uh, because it's going to start in less than an hour. Washington against Colorado. Pac-12 championship. I like the Huskies. Man, did they make a statement last week against a good Washington State team? Colorado's had a hell of a year, you know, putting together 10 wins. Um, they have been maybe the biggest surprise in college football of the season, but this is another level of competition. They'll be playing Washington. Too good of athletes, too good of offense. I just don't see the Buffaloes hanging in there. Give me Washington minus the eight. Big 12 action on Saturday. Regular season comes to an end for the Big 12 since they don't have a conference championship game until next year. It doesn't help us right now. West Virginia, I think, steamrolls past Baylor. Baylor has gone down the tubes. They've had injuries. Of course, problems on, off the field. I can go on and on and on, but I won't. Baylor just wants this season to end. And I think West Virginia wants double digits and to upgrade their bowl selection that badly. Give me the Mountaineers at home, minus a 17 and a half. And then you have the AAC Championship Navy, okay? This is why um, part of that poll tomorrow, not the top of it, but maybe the bottom of that top 25 gets delayed a little bit or why they don't make the major bowl selections on all the games to, on Sunday. That's because Navy and Western Michigan are that close to each other in the current standings. Okay, that's important because, remember, the highest-ranked group of five champion will get a major bowl bid. And, of course, Western Michigan's undefeated and tonight. Um, I don't know how they're doing against Ohio, but Western Michigan is in the MAC championship. So if they win that, that puts pressure on Navy to try to win the AAC. And even with a win over Temple in the AAC championship game, Navy still has to beat Army uh, next week in the final regular season game that's on December uh, the 10th. And so the committee might have to wait to see how Navy does this week and how they do next week against Army before deciding who's going to be ranked the highest amongst the group of five champions. Navy, take them, minus a two and a half over Temple. Midshipmen have too much riding on this game. Big Ten Championship, Penn State, Wisconsin. The total is 46 and a half. I don't know who's going to win, but... I don't think the teams combined for that many points. So give me the under 46 and a half between Penn State and Wisconsin. Speaking of totals, we'll round out our picks for the season. Final one, number one Alabama, champions of the West of the SEC, taking on champions of the SEC East. Florida, these two teams seem to play all the time in the SEC championship game. Bama seems to win most of them. Of course, they'll win this one, but the intriguing factor is going to be the total. That's 40 points. I think it goes slightly over. Don't be surprised if Florida scores their only touchdown on defense. Their defense is that good, but their offense is crummy. I think Bama wears Florida down, and in the second half, they get massive separation on the scoreboard. So in this case, I'm going to take the over on the total, which is 40 between Bama and Florida. Those are my five selections. Um, again, thanks, everybody, for joining me during this season of Let's Talk College Football whether you're a returning subscriber or brand new, thank you for letting me break down some games. Even though my picking was bad, of course, you're probably thinking, man, you suck at picking. Hey, just pick the opposite of me, and this year you would have been a winner. So sometime next week, uh, we will um, have a, a, a college football playoff breakdown of some sort. It won't be called less college football, but it will be like a preview show of the major bowls. And of course, all the major bowls may not be filled out yet because of Navy, but we'll know for sure who will be in the top four come Sunday, December the 4th. It's been one wacky college football season, and hey, it's not over yet. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Catch you next time.